So, after four videos dissecting Rise of the Beast to find interesting details and references to past and future movies, here we are at the final stop. This time around, however, I have no details or easter eggs to discuss. What I want to talk about is the current and very real decline in Transformers, not just in the movies, but also in the shows and toys and games. Every form of Transformers content is slowly falling in quality, especially the games and shows. So before I begin, let's roll that intro. First, let's talk about the toys, because that is the smallest section of my script. When Hasbro first started making Transformers toys again after G1, it was for shows like Armada, Robots in Disguise, and also for animated. But they were nothing special. But a specific set of toys had set the standard for excellent engineering in Transformers toys. The movie toys were actually good toys from the mainline, which should have been expected from Hasbro being a toy company. But now the quality of mainline Transformers toys is in a continuous downward trend. I don't feel so good. It went from these complex and interesting toys to these ugly one-step changes and smash changes and whatnot. The new set of toys has one specific gimmick, to make transformation faster and easier. But it is to the point where there is no fun in transforming the toys anymore. This is however in contrast to Ropesen's approach, who gave their toys a tactile and mechanical transformation. You could see where each piece went. Actually. Talking about Robosen segues nicely into my next point. The mainline toys are now not even the best quality. There are so many other third party companies that make way better toys than Hasbro, like Studio Series, 3.0, Toy World, Unique Toys, and Takara, just to name some. And all of these companies do a better job individually of producing Transformers toys than all of Hasbro. In my opinion, these one-step changes and smash changes should be cancelled because they look horrible and most of the time do not even closely resemble either the robot mode or the alt mode of a character. At least Hasbro had that going for them in the early days. The toys looked mostly screen accurate. Now they just look like a parody of the beta designs of the Babels. There have been quite a few Transformers games. like. A lot. And out of all of these, I would have to say that only about six are truly notable for the strides they made in graphics, story, or gameplay, relative to the date of release, of course. These six being, in chronological order, this game was actually based on Transformers Armada and followed the story revolving around the minicons just like in the show. It is highly praised for its story and graphics, for the time. This game was supposed to be the game adaptation of the live action universe, and in my opinion is still pretty solid. It introduces new elements like a very G1 accurate looking shockwave, relatively speaking, and even a bumblebee and barricade fight. I am grouping these two together because there were not any notable strides taken in storytelling or graphics although they were some of the best received Transformers games, so I felt obligated to include them. This game set the standard for true Transformers games, and set up a unique playing environment where the player experienced the War of Cybertron first hand, and I have to say that not only were the graphics excellent, but the story was also nothing short of a legendary tale, still the gold standard of Transformers games. Transformers Fall of Cybertron took the concept established in War for Cybertron and amplified it with aspects such as the improved gunplay mechanics and unique story beats such as being able to choose whether you fight as Megatron or Optimus in the final battle. I think that this game is also really good especially since its story was told in such a unique and interesting way. This game was supposed to be the actual successor to Valve for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, but we all know how that ended. And while this game was a console exclusive, it still was an awesome game that was very adventurous with the Transformers Prime mythos. I think that this game is the best 
show or movie tie-in in the whole franchise. Now, time to discuss where these games truly fell. The first nail in the coffin was the mobile games. And no, I do not mean Forge to Fight. That game is objectively good and I still enjoy it to this day. I mainly refer to the Transformers Robots in Disguise game, the Transformers Earth Wars game, Angry Birds Transformers, and Transformers Battlegrounds. All these games tried to reinvent the whole Transformers game formula and tried something unique, but all failed because they forgot one key aspect, the really important part of Transformers, the immersive controls and combat. Along with these was the biggest detriment to Transformers in history. Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. This game was supposed to be the successor to Fall of Cybertron, but I personally club it with Live Action Universe and pretend that Fall of Cybertron was the last game in the series. Not only did this game reuse the assets from Fall of Cybertron shamelessly, but it retold the exact same story that was told in the previous game with barely any changes, which makes it useless and an utter waste of time. Now let's talk about the upcoming games. I'm excited for Transformers Reactivate because it looks gorgeous and is interesting. But Transformers Earthspark Expedition looks like it's just a copy paste of the show, kinda like they're repeating the Rise of the Dark Spark situation. There is barely any differences and even the game has the same villain as the show. They're just retreading already explored ground and that is what I do not like. Most of the shows between 1980 and 2017 were all excellent. This includes the G1 series, because it's the OG, Beast Wars, because it's genuinely a good story, Transformers Armada, Transformers Animated, Transformers Robots in Disguise, not you, Transformers Prime, and Transformers Rescue Bots. In my personal opinion, Transformers Animated, Prime, and Rescue Bots set the standard for excellence in Transformers storytelling. Not only was animated a compelling story that made you want to care for its core cast, but it was also very innovative with how it handled the characters of Sentinel Prime, Optimus Prime, and Ultra Magnus. While the show did end abruptly, I would argue that this was still a wholesome ending because it brings everyone's arcs full circle and finally puts an end to Megatron's tyranny. Next is Transformers Prime. And I will sound like a light here in the shelf of the Transformers fanbase and I decide to die on this hill. But only because it's true. Transformers Prime is the literal gold standard for good Transformers storytelling. It brought back more G1 voice actors than any other non-G1 project and introduced us to the genius of Steve Bloom's Starscream. Doctor in the house. Ah. Knockout. And how is the patient doing today? Same old. The Decepticons deserve a strong, alert leader. One who would require a loyal second in command. <laughs> a candidate would need to earn that post by making a strong case to said eyes and ears. A case for showing mercy, Lord Starscream and gave Frank Welker and Peter Cullen the respect that they deserved. This is their first time on screen together as Megatron and Optimus since Generation 1, and it is done beautifully. This show also did not shy away from material like the IDW comics and other forms of media, and also did not try and hinder its content. This show also had one of the best endings in Transformers history. Dreadlock is genuinely an excellent finale because it delivers on so many things that were set up, like the restoration of Bumblebee's voice and of Cybertron, and finally the death of Megatron, which was executed so well. While I personally wish that Optimus had killed Megatron, it makes a lot more sense that Bumblebee would have, because he was not as attached to Megatron as Optimus was. Finally on the list is Transformers Rescue Bots, the second project in the Align continuity, and this show was actually good. 
It is still very much a kid's show, but it does such a great job of establishing its unique plot and weaving the web of interconnected stories. This show generally excels at telling the story of the bond between its set of eight rescue bots and the human family with whom they stay. And here we are at the final stretch. The truest form of Transformers degradation in history. When the first movie was made, it was not a financial success because the company decided to kill Optimus. But here's the thing, I actually think that the first movie was excellent because narratively it is very well constructed, including the death of Optimus, with great setup and payoff that was really powerful. Other than this, the other amazing movie was Transformers Prime, Beast Hunters, Predacons Rising. A truly great movie that proves that Transformers stories are somehow best told in animation. The Baver started off pretty strong with its first entry, which was actually pretty good. My only major complaint with that movie was the robot mode designs. I mean, these Transformers look like literal scrap metal was used to assemble them. And most egregious was the design of Optimus himself. His car and robot mode look so ugly because Michael Bay could not capture red on his screen as well as he wanted to. So he just got a blue truck and painted it with red hot rod flames which looks so goddamn ugly. The absolute lack of any substance in these films does not improve the situation. All the Bay movies lack any real character arcs and storytelling. It's just busy, unwatchable and loud CGI action. At least the reboot films do a better job of establishing the characters and making them feel genuine rather than just caricatures. For the most part, the fourth entry only falls further from grace which made Optimus a friggin' knight. But somehow, even though the second, third and fourth movies were all garbage, they still made bank at the box office, netting more than $2.5 billion put together. By the fifth movie, everyone had just decided to ignore the series as a whole, and the repercussions of Bay's actions can still be felt in the entire franchise. Not just in the reboot wars, but also in the shows and also in other forms of Transformers media. Bumblebee and Rise of the Beasts are great examples of what Transformers movies should be. It does not need to be perfect, but it has to be a Transformers movie. They do focus on the humans, but from the perspective of the Autobots rather than making the humans the central focus. Bumblebee exemplifies this by making Bumblebee and Charlie's relationship the central focus on how Bumblebee overcomes his amnesia and is able to defeat Shatter and Dropkick and save Earth. And honestly, that is how it should be done. Use the relationship between the Autobots and humans to warrant and motivate their actions, rather than having the humans be the sole reason for any plot points. Another positive with the reboot verse is that in Rise of the Beasts, they gave Optimus Prime a f personality and an actual character arc. I hope that the studio can make it land with the next movie because I have high hopes for Transformers 1. It's a movie based on the war for Cybertron, so they have the right to go absolutely wild with the story and make it as faithful to the source material as they wish. While the reboot worst films are not perfect, they are a far cry from the unwatchable eyesore that is the Bayverse. They lack the cringe-worthy writing and dialogue. Hopefully, Transformers 1 can take the lessons learned and apply it to improve its story. The writers, actors and other members of the staff have their work cut out for them with the idea behind this movie. It's a movie taking place entirely on Cybertron and has so many interesting and rich story beats. And this movie is animated and I personally think that the animated Transformers movies are S tier Transformers content. Anyway. This was just a little rant I wanted to do on the current situation of the Transformers franchise. And I really think the way to recover is to return the shows to the status of being for all ages rather than just being childish gob.
comparable to the likes of CGI Thomas and Friends and the new Tom and Jerry show. And to really stick the landing with Transformers Reactivate and Transformers 1. Thank you guys so much for watching.